welcome to Conversations with Dr. Stephen Greer. This is Dr. Greer, and I'd like to thank the folks at the World Fusion Network for hosting us every two weeks here to uh, give you an update on what's going on with CSETI, the Center for the Study of Extraterrestrial Intelligence, and the Disclosure Project, and the Orion Project. And we're going to be focusing today on the coming year 2012 and what plans we have for some really big uh, quantum leaps forward, as it were, in both contact and disclosure, and want to bring everyone up to date with what we're planning to do. And I'm going to be joined by a CSETI board member, Dr. John Bravo, who's a very dear friend and also a fellow emergency physician who uh, has been working with us for uh, well over 14 years now. We first met in 1998 in Hawaii when we did a CSETI expedition to the Big Island there. And uh, Dr. Bravo has been such a key person in my life and also uh, was the chief funder for the Disclosure Project who very generously gave the funds so that we could do the launch of the Disclosure Project in 2001 at the National Press Club and bring out all the information to the public. So welcome, uh, Jan, to the show. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And, in fact, it's been a real whirlwind these past couple of months, so I'm very excited about being here, and I'm very anxious to talk about what's upcoming. I know. Well, why don't, why don't you mention a little bit again? We were just out in uh, on the West Coast in uh, Hollywood, I mean Hollywood <laughs> and, <laughs> and Los Angeles, and we're going to be heading back out there soon for some meetings, and there's some really exciting things that are on the horizon. Well, first, I would like to say that over the past years, you've been approached several times by directors, film directors from all over the world who want to do your story, who want to do more disclosure and ex- an extension of what's already uh, of, what, of what you began really 20 years ago and what peaked it with the 2001 Disclosure Project. Um, just a word about that. That that um, 2001 Disclosure Project uh, presentation that you put together of military witnesses at um, the uh, National Press Club in Washington D.C. was viewed by over a billion people. That that first sets a standard of uh, of the reach that you have and this work has, and the interest in this work all over the world. Yeah, we were actually shocked. And, in fact, the head of the uh, – there's a company at the time called Connect Live that was hosting all the uh, broadcasts out of the National Press Club, and, and they also hosted CNN and the Department of Defense. And and they were not prepared for the numbers of people interested in this subject. In fact, uh, it, it, back in those days, we're talking a decade ago, it used up every T1 line in the city they could get access to. There were so many people trying to view it online live. And uh, what was interesting is that afterwards they called me into their headquarters um, and they said, we have never seen anything like this, that uh, literally they had a, a graph that they had made of the most, at that time, watched event on the Internet and uh, they uh, on CNN, and it was a bar that went up so far, and then the most watched event that was ever done at the Department of Defense that they had hosted, and then ours was 10 times larger. They said they had never seen such interest. And there were 22 network cameras from around the world there. And what's interesting is that the first hour of it was jammed electronically, and uh, there's speculation that it was the National Security Agency, the NSA, or some other entity, but they said they had never seen anything like that, where all signals leaving the National Press Club building, that is just a few blocks from the White House in Washington, were blocked for the first hour. They were trying to put a time delay on it so they could contain it, and it was just one of these amazing events, but of course it launched the worldwide disclosure movement. Yes, as a matter of fact, since that time, if if one looks at um, what's happened since that presentation, many governments, which this has been enumerated in past World Pujas and on our website, uh, but many governments have released their archives on UFOs and on this subject, which is uh, fascinating. Um, it, 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 interest is is just at a peak 
and people are people want more information but this this started because of the type of witnesses you brought forward they were all carefully researched and vetted well you have a lot more information you have hundreds more witnesses that you have filmed over the years um who you've not even had the chance to bring out it's so much work and you um again this is this work just for everyone's information um over that time there have been many people who have been very interested in volunteering but often the exigencies of life of daily life um lead them to you know back into just the mundane things of the world steve you've continued every day over the past more than 20 years and first of all i want to thank you for that uh but the information that you've built up is incredible and there is a lot more that needs to be gotten out so this is as i think you've said the second wave you've given right. other people a chance to get this out but it it's time for us to get out a lot more of what you have well you know it's interesting a lot of people have asked over the years you know i said well you know the people think that because we have had a very large number of people from around the world and have had uh i mean members of royal families that i really can't name um heads of state ministers of defense congressmen senators have all come forward um wanting information we provide that information um and now we see you know the french government a few years ago released uh 100,000 or so uh, pages of documents from their space agency even the ministry of defense in great britain which has been a hard nut to crack started releasing a lot of their files um denmark did um as did um, a number of south american countries the mexican government they held a press conference to show uh contact they had had with their air force and a, a ufo that was uh, filmed and they released that film footage from the craft and these are all uh dispositive facts that can be proven and all of that started because of 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 this initial event where it made it okay to talk about it because and it wasn't so much anything i did or said it was being bringing together and this is the force of people coming together to do this uh dozens of these military and uh, intelligence witnesses who were coming forward to release this information you know about a year ago we released the interview of a, of, of a gentleman that i in, uh, had uh, done the filming of uh, william pollock about 10 years ago and we released this a little over a year ago his name william pollock and those of you who want to see it can go to uh, youtube slash uh, youtube.com slash c seti c s e t i web c seti web so that's youtube.com c seti web we have a channel there and you know there've been <laughs> excuse me some like a half a million uploads of that within the first couple months what happened was that this was a man who i had interviewed and he was of course very concerned for his safety and he told me very frankly that he was afraid that he, he or and or his family would be killed and so i said look i absolutely will honor your request for confidentiality um i will keep this digital interview in a vault um in a secure location uh, until your passing which is was his request after he passed away um regrettably uh about a little over a year ago his um significant other sent us a uh, death certificate with the permission um uh, you know proving that he had passed on and that we can release this interview so we did and he's talking about the radio frequency chips that were developed in the 70s and 80s that uh, at one point Siemens had uh, I think uh, had manufactured a couple billion of them that could be implanted in humans and uh for tracking purposes and what have you and it's a very fascinating interview and so what what I one of the things I've said to people is that we have so much information like this some of which can't be released and told the, the people you know give us clearance but uh, there's a lot of uh something like 110 hours of this kind of testimony a lot of it we could be bringing out but we haven't until now had the the means to do it now we're about to we're in the process of interviewing someone who's a whiz at internet uh things that we're going to put on uh, to uh begin to go through these files and release them through the YouTube channel and also to be used in a uh, new 
a world-encompassing documentary that our goal is that we get one to two billion people minimum to see it virally. So this is something we're going to work on this year. Um, I tell people that after we did this National Press Club event, there were already uh, over 100 of these top secret uh, witnesses. Now there's four or 500 of them. And But, of course, we haven't had really uh, the, the, the means to, to – pursue all of that because what people don't understand is that you actually don't have a staff here. I mean, basically, we, it's been uh, myself and, and my wife and, and, and Jan and a whole group of volunteers, and we don't have an office building with staff to go around and do what 60 Minutes or CNN or whatever you can do. So what we're going to try to do this year is put the means together to go around and follow up on a lot of the new people who have come forward. Uh, that uh, contacted us after they saw the Disclosure Project uh, events on CNN and the BBC and media around the world, but also to begin to release a lot more of, of these uh, things we have in our archives. Um, and, and it's a matter of having time and people to do it. So, uh, of course, anyone who, who feels they could really help us with that, please contact us at uh, DisclosureProject.org. Uh, it's, a, it's a big undertaking, and, and a, a lot of it has been, of course, financial restraints to do it and personnel, because if you don't have people working all the time on this, it's very hard to do. But what we feel is that this is the year to take an order of magnitude launch upward for both contact and disclosure. And the disclosure is also going to focus heavily on the science and technology end of it that deals with energy and propulsion systems because what most people don't understand, and, and I always tell this story of, you know, back in the good old days when I was, oh, I don't know, younger and perhaps more trusting and I guess naive, really, I mean, to be honest. Um, I was asked to brief President Clinton's first CIA director on this subject, and my wife Emily and I flew up to Washington. I was working full-time as an emergency doctor. And and so, you know, you never know when you're meeting with someone like that who's a cabinet-level official, particularly the director of central intelligence, CIA director or secretary of defense or someone of that stature, if you're really going to have a 10-minute meeting or if it's going to go on for longer. But I came prepared, and... It ended up, but of course, the cover story for it was a dinner party there near Washington, um, hosted by the head of a military think tank, uh, and who was very supportive of of briefing the people uh, in Washington on this subject and getting a consensus to end the secrecy. Well, <laughs> you know, I, at one point I thought, well, you know, if we get this information to the president and to people like the CIA director they'll be able to be convinced that not only is it legitimate, but then they'll be able to facilitate the disclosure of it. Well, as it turns out, those were a facts not in evidence, as they say in the legal profession. Uh, they did not have access to these projects and had been denied access specifically. And I was told by a friend of the president's, as well as, as the man uh, who set up this meeting for, the, for us with the CIA director, that the uh, both of these figures had made directed and specific inquiries through the chain of command on this issue of extraterrestrial intelligence, UFOs, what have you, and they had just been told, well, no such thing exists, there are no projects dealing with it, and basically were lied to. Now, interestingly, when I confronted um, – when I first heard that story, I, I frankly didn't really believe it. I thought that, well, the CIA director and the president wanted me to come forward to share what I had gathered and discovered just as an intelligence gathering uh, uh, ruse, uh, and that it was a bit of a prevarication to say that they were being denied access. So I didn't actually believe that. And uh, But this man who set up the meeting said to me, and I, I, I said, his name was John, and I said, John, look, and he had been a, on the a staffer for the National Security Council for President Ronald Reagan back in the day, in the 80s. And I said, look, if the president calls people in and we have names, project code numbers, et cetera, won't they have to tell the president about this? And he laughed in my face. He went, ah, ha, ha, I started laughing. He says, if we didn't want the old man to know about something, we just lied to him. 
I said, excuse me, you lied to the President of the United States? He says, oh, yeah, we lie to the President all the time. So that was my introduction into the cynicism and, frankly, criminality of how Washington doesn't work or works, depending on how you want to look at it. So when I had this meeting with the CIA director, who R. James Woolsey, and Woolsey was Clinton's first CIA director, um, he genuinely was shaken to his foundations. I spent maybe 10 minutes on the evidence. And I had brought I had brought a whole suitcase of a briefcase and photos and documents and testimony and all kinds of things. And the CIA director, after ten minutes, he says, "Yes, I know these are real, because it turns out he and his wife had seen one years ago in New Hampshire." But he says, "Why won't they tell me? Why won't they tell the president? Who's keeping this secret? But more importantly, why are they?" And that, of course, took us down the whole path of if you disclose the fact that the UFOs are real and that some of them are of extraterrestrial origin, but also some of them that we see are man-made and made by Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, my uncle who designed the lunar module. My uncle was the chief project engineer for the lunar module, put the first men on the moon. You get into this world where you realize that The science and technology behind these uh, allegedly mysterious objects, and and, and they're only mysterious because people have been lied to about it, would would it be be disclosed? And if you disclosed the modus operandi, quoting from a top-secret Canadian government, where they talk about uh, in this document uh, from 1951 that a secret cell within the United States was studying the propulsion and energy systems behind UFOs back in 1951, and that at that time, now we're talking, my friend, 61 years ago, that at that time it was the most secret issue in the United States government exceeding the secrecy of the development of the hydrogen bomb. Now remember, that was a year before we detonated the first hydrogen bomb at Bikini Atoll. And what that means is we have a situation where it was so compartmented and secret that it eventually escaped the oversight and control of the president and the Congress. So that happened in the 50s. So there's a couple of reasons why the secrecy keeps perpetuating itself. Number one, the people who we think that we elect and appoint and send to Washington, you know, Mr. Smith or whoever it is that goes to Washington, they're not going to be quote unquote read into or briefed on this. Number two, if they are, it's because they've agreed to go along with the secrecy. And number three, if they don't comply, they'll be killed. So that's the sad truth of it. But back in the day I didn't really believe that that would be the case. And so, you know, I thought, well, let's let's give the system a chance and for about eight years we gave the system a chance until two thousand and one and we said, Okay, we're gonna do this ourselves and you know what? I get asked all the time, oh, when is the president going to disclose? I said, no, no, wait, stop right there. We're going to disclose the truth because while we would love to see the president and the Congress do this, they're not going to for two reasons. One, they don't want to be ridiculed because the mainstream media you know, just call you a nut job if you look into this issue. And number two, they – don't have control and access, and they don't want to admit it. One of the shocking things at the end of this meeting, and it ends up being almost three hours with the CIA director, was that when I gave him this white paper that I had written uh, about disclosing this information, it's in our first book called Extraterrestrial um, Contact, the the Evidence and Implications um, that came out about 10 or 12 years ago. And you can get that at DisclosureProject.org. There are all kinds of documents in there and papers. Well, what I, when I gave that to the CIA director and his wife, who was the head of the National Academy of Sciences or chief off, operating officer of the National Academy of Sciences at least, I said, you know, we really need to have the president and, and you guys take these actions and declassify this information, bring the science and technology out, a whole new civilization could be started here. We could get off oil, gas, coal, nuclear power, because these objects are not traveling amongst the stars 
using fossil fuels. Come on. I mean, they're, they're not using a circa 1800s internal combustion engines or circa 1940s rockets. They're using very advanced physics, which have been studied for over 50 or 60 years and have been figured out. But that's the core of the secrecy. But then he looked at me and he said, the CIA director said, well, how do we disclose that which we have no access to? And there was a stunned silence. For years, I couldn't tell this story without weeping, actually. And I thought, what? And, and so what he was saying to me was that no president or senator who's chairman of the Intelligence Committee wants to admit that there's a parallel secret compartmented government that is run completely off into their own domain and, and who have – lied to presidents and engaged in all kinds of murder and mayhem and criminal activities to keep this secret. So no president wants to admit that they're not in charge because it would be a complete and utter constitutional crisis, the likes of which no country on earth has ever seen. So I think you know there are a number of complex reasons why in the United States there has been so much foot dragging and still persistent denials. You know, recently a group had a petition on the White House website asking for the president to release all this stuff about ETs and UFOs, and there was some low-level uh, bureaucrat who came forward and said, "Oh well, you know, uh, there's nothing to release, and we have no knowledge of it, and et cetera, and so on." Now, in defense of this gentleman, he was probably telling you the truth because he wouldn't be in a position to know. And, you know, because if, if I've sat with someone like a CIA director or brief the head of intelligence for the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and I personally spent an hour or two briefing the head of the Defense Intelligence Agency, which is like the Pentagon's own CIA, none of these generals, admirals, high officials knew anything about the subject and, in fact, had told me when they tried to look into it were just flat out denied access and lied to. So this brings up another issue, and that is <laughs> it, it keeps coming around full circle, doesn't it? We the people. Yeah. You know, here I am, you know, uh, Dr. Bravo and I live uh, within a few minutes of Monticello, Thomas Jefferson's home. And, of course, Thomas Jefferson, for those of you who don't recall, wrote the Declaration of Independence. And here we are, and <laughs> we the people. And I always say to folks, don't look to the bureaucrats and the big corporations and the big governmental entities to do this. We have to do it. And that's why we have done DisclosureProject.org, have done the OrionProject.org, and, and CSETI.org, uh, CSETI.org, to go out and make contact. Because you don't see Hillary Clinton heading up a diplomatic team to do this, nor do you see the head of the United Nations or any other country. There are some countries who have made inquiries to us about teaching them how we're making contact, and they take it into their system. But they don't want to get out ahead of this, ahead of the United States, which is the 8,000-pound gorilla on the world geopolitical stage. And so what happens is that everything kind of crunches down into this kind of inertia that the secrecy has engendered. And that means that we have to do it. And, you know, there's been the Arab Spring, and, and people are now talking about the possibility of a Russian Spring. There has to be a global springtime where the whole world comes together and says, we want all of this secrecy ended so that we can have these sciences and technologies and, uh, and have energy for our homes and cars that pull it out of the fabric of space-time, the so-called zero-point energy field, where we won't have to destroy the biosphere or see half the world's population in terrible poverty uh, so that the other uh, small percentage of us can hog all the uh, resources like uh, minerals and oil and gas and coal. And I think that all of these issues are things which should concern every human being on Earth. The problem is the UFO and ET issue gets sort of, it's sort of the orphan and the stepchild of, 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 of science, and it kind of gets ridiculed and pushed to the side. I had an Air Force major tell me once that, in fact, the secrecy on this issue was in large part a product of just relentless ridicule. And I have a CIA document from the 50s that actually talks about engaging Disney Studios, we're going to get back to Hollywood here in a minute, to make cartoons 
and sort of comical things about aliens so that it would be diffused and it's sort of a psychological warfare approach and it was very effective it, and to this date it's been very very effective and so this is the power of disclosure project is by pulling together uh, colonels and generals and military officers and intelligence officials and corporate people who have had first-hand knowledge of these projects or sightings uh, air, uh, pilots uh, uh, military pilots and radar operators what you have is a body of evidence that's so undeniable that you really have to have your head stuck way down in the sand not to know it's true. And that's what DisclosureProject.org has put together. You know, We have a book that's almost 600 pages long that has uh, 69 of these top secret witnesses' testimony in them, countless government documents. Um, we have uh, a number of videos that are out that show the, 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 these uh, people speaking as well as images of these craft that are on uh, our contact we've had that's in the new book uh, that's uh, called uh, Contact Countdown the Transformation um, that is at DisclosureProject.org. And that comes with a DVD that has uh, images of, of amazing contact, although it needs to be updated now because so much has happened in the last two and a half years. But what you find is that when you begin to drill down on this just a little bit, it's very, very substantial. And so what's exciting is that Dr. Bravo and I have begun to to meet with some folks who, uh, and, and in one case, a man who actually has an Emmy for doing work in the documentary field, who has a great interest in doing a dispositive, uh, definitive account of this. And we're very excited about that uh, hopefully happening in 2012. Yes, he has impeccable credentials. And uh, the good news is that he really wants the truth out. He's as hungry for the truth as anyone else. Yes. So uh, that this is this is impressive because a lot of times people in Hollywood want to spin something their own way, the way they think it'll sell. Well, honestly, people are ready for the truth, and I think um, the team of him and us will be wonderful with with the witnesses you've gotten and all the information you have. I think it's really going to be spectacular because it's the truth. And, and the people, there's something about the truth that people resonate with, and that's very hopeful. Right, and the other, <laughs> the other thing that's very exciting is that, you know, out of the 110 hours of of, of these military witnesses uh, that I filmed, I did a 35 hour, um, what I call the director's cut, because I'm the director of, of a sort of a, a play on words, the director's cut like you'd have for a film, but also I'm the director of CSETI and Disclosure Project. So I did this myself um, <laughs> on my home computer, and I have to tell you, I'm no film editor. But, uh, in fact, most people know to keep me away from all machinery because I <laughs> usually break everything. But um, if it's not a defibrillator or a respirator, just don't get me near it. But I managed to do this. I don't know how, but I did. And But this 35-hour uh, distillation is amazing. Now, no one really wants to see 35 hours in a film, but if we, we're looking for the right person to help us begin to put that into digestible segments and put it on the YouTube channel we have now. And yeah. you see, it, that would be so exciting because we put that one interview from, from William Powlick after he passed away up, and, and it was just hundreds of thousands of people immediately wanted to see it. So we want to kind of do that on like literally a weekly basis. And so that's one of the goals we have for this year. And we're actually uh, talking to some people who could help do that for us because that would be such an exciting thing because we have it. Um, and now with the, you know, YouTube has, you know, 800 million uh, members and viewers around the world, this can this will begin to get, get out uh, ahead of, of this documentary we want to do. Uh, and one of the things that we want to include in the documentary is not just the evidence that the ETs are here, but also the reasons behind the secrecy and really go deep into this whole question of who's keeping the secret and why, what the CIA director asked, and really going into that uh, to, so people understand that uh, – it isn't being kept secret for trivial reasons. It's a multi-hundred trillion dollar issue because of the assets that are in the ground that somebody owns, oil, gas, coal, centralized utilities, internal combustion engines, jet engines, rockets, 
all of it's obsolete. This information comes out, yes, it would be the biggest transformation in human civilization in recorded history that is not hyperbole. So, that, and, and of course, it, it's for that reason that the subject has been compartmented into such tightly held uh, boxes to the point that a CIA director would be saying to me, yes, I know this is real, but no one will tell me anything about it. I mean, it's like through the looking glass. I mean, I really went down the rabbit hole and through the looking glass with with this, you know, some 15 years ago. But w what we are finding now is that more and more people are prepared to hear the full story. And the biggest part of the full story is the third part of the document. We want to do disclosure the energy issue and the propulsion question. And the third part of it is going to be a focus on the trans-dimensional science of consciousness, what everyone at the World Puja Network listeners know about, and that is that the contact that CSETI has been making has been facilitated through the ability to go into deep states of consciousness, remote view distant places in space, and connect with extraterrestrial communication systems that interface with coherent thought. Like you think of light, coherent light is a laser, very, very clear. Coherent thought from that level of consciousness is something that can then begin to communicate with their very advanced electronic systems, and then they can contact a group in all kinds of ways, in consciousness, in thought, in tone, in sound, light, orbs, fully materialized craft, things that launch up from the earth and fly over us. There's a video that we're dying to, to get out there uh, through this, this series of, of, of uh, you know, if we find the right person technically who can do this, um, because there's one where we're at Mount Shasta a couple years ago. You won't believe this film. Because we're there making contact, we've been doing this meditation, suddenly we're all standing because we're seeing objects from the mountain and then a light ship, that is, and this is filmed, lifts up from right in front of us in the forest floor, goes at unbelievable speed over us, dematerializes, and Todd Goldenbaum filmed this amazing camera work, and then rematerializes and is sort of corkscrewing as it goes out into space and vanishes and every you can hear everyone there there's some 30 or 40 people on this ambassador expedition and they're just gasping and this is on film it is unbelievable and you know I, and the same thing with what's been going on at other expeditions we're going to be by the way in, in Marco Island in April um, of this year and we're going to do another those of you who are interested in coming you can find out at ccetti.org the dates and and everything but we're going to be at this uh, island in the um the uh, right on the gulf of mexico and uh it'll be april 15th to the 21st um and so we're going to be there uh doing these protocols where last year we had an entire trans-dimensional flotilla gather and for three and a half hours we had these lights it's hard to describe conscious intelligent yeah. lights they were conscious and intelligent and light. You can see them with your naked eye, and we filmed them. We have dozens of them on videotape. And they emerged, and they were not like out in space. They were 100 yards in front of us over these mangroves between us and the water. And it wasn't like one or two very transient. It was three and a half hours of this. And it all started after the first time I ever did a puja in the center of our circle instead of outside of it. And we were honoring a member of our team who, who had passed away just a, a month or two before. And it was this very spiritual puja and very deep meditation. And as that meditation went on, they began to gather and emerge. And it's, it's actually stunningly beautiful and very yeah. spiritual. Everyone saw a, a part of that. Um, everyone could attest to seeing a part of that. And also what's interesting is that this has been happening for so long. We're now just getting some of the more subtle things that you can't see with your eyes, whereas we saw these with our eyes, um, and people would affirm that. Um, we also get other things that people that are so fast people can't see with their eyes, but with as the technology gets better um, with the cameras, it's amazing what, what detail we get and what we capture. Well, I remind people that the, the human eye and even most cameras can only film things within a certain spectrum. 
Um, and if they go beyond that speed or spectrum, it didn't have to go beyond the speed of light. It isn't going to be visible. The, the, the eye can only see. However, the cameras with the new digital uh, mm -hmm. technology are capturing objects and even ET beings. A couple of years ago, we were at Joshua Tree National Park. If you go to csetiorg org, you'll see this photograph. And this uh, extraterrestrial ambassador appeared right outside our circle in this sort of light form. But you can see the, I mean, it's this electronic, it, it isn't a just a spirit beam because it wouldn't be picked up by a camera, but it, it's, it's this where electromagnetic fields and trans-dimensional astral energies and consciousness come together. And that's the science of the next millennium. It's the science of these conscious forms. And it's That's what's exciting. And same thing in yes. healing. Same thing for the mind and body I, healing. I will say that people have come forward with some very amazing um, events that they've had happen on their own that describe this same thing. You know, they've come to us, and we've sat with them. Um, and they've described the same thing we're having in our um, in our outings. They've described having the same thing happen to them independently. So this is um, this is something that's accessible to everyone um, with doing the correct practice and being in the correct state of mind. Right, right, and 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 also with the intent. You know, one of the problems in the last. Um, a couple of years, I, uh, there are something like 18 movies that have been made in Hollywood that are mm, all yeah. universally negative, alien invasion scenarios or negative things of one type or another. Interestingly, here we're a group of people that have gone all over the world and made contact. No one's ever been harmed. No one's ever been scared. The only times we've been harmed or scared is when humans have invaded our space and harassed us or shot at us. Or, you know, I was up on Mount Shasta and had a had a stalker that was uh, put a laser beam on me from a from a, a, a scope like you have on a sniper rifle scope, and I had to hit the desert floor. Um, and you know, yes, I mean, you know, humans have been a problem. The extraterrestrial beings have never, ever been a problem. It's been nothing but joy and just wonder. And so what I say to people is that the proof of the puddings and the eating with all the uh, stories out there that are designed to scare people off or to ridicule the subject, the facts are something quite different. And, and it's interesting because um, years ago I found that if, if I had come forward with a story of alien abduction and torture or something like that, there would be, you know, Harper Collins and every other book publisher lined up offering million dollar advances. Nobody would touch the disclosure book or these contact books we have because they have the truth in them. And that is the truth. So what's interesting is that the big conglomerates in the media and in Hollywood if they want to do this story, someone comes to them and says, don't do it. It's like the head of ABC News was going to do all of this, got a phone call and said, don't do this story. And he called me up and he said, they won't let me do it. We had a, a, a Hollywood producer, who uh, more than one, uh, who would, I'm not going to name who they are, but they'd virtually be household names in America, who wanted to do this story. And they one got visited by a CIA guy and another was – at a major studio, and he had a $60 million uh, discretionary budget to do any film he wanted, and this is the one he wanted to do, all of this based on a true story. And he flew me out there and said, I can absolutely do that. And I was very skeptical, actually. I said, well, I hope you can. And a couple weeks later, he calls me up and says, they won't let me do this film. And I said, well, I thought you had complete discretion over this. He says, well, not this. So we know this is going to have to come out through an independent film, an indie, as they call it. It's going to have to be done by people who are conscious, who don't care about the money aspect of it. They care about the truth, and they care about getting the message out to the world because this is the thing that is going to ignite uh, an entire new uh, civilization uh, can be uh, sort of uh, – sprung from the seeds of knowledge and we've had this knowledge for a half a century or longer and it's just time for the for the truth to be known without all the spin and without all the fear mongering and war mongering it was a lot of war mongering because people you know really 
uh, when you think about it, uh, the frightening uh, episodes that people always hear about, the reason those get pushed to the forefront of books and films and movies and and presentations and conferences, frankly, is because the intelligence community wants people to focus on that because their long-term goal is to control people through fear. Uh, you know, I think that's what the master stroke of 9-11 was. I mean, regardless of, of what you believe about how that came about, it, it enabled people to give up their liberties and do the Patriot Act and, uh, you know, invade two Middle Eastern countries, and uh, one of which had absolutely no involvement with this, and, and uh, notwithstanding the lies that we were told. And, and, and so basically what you have is uh, 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 an attempt uh, to for rather shadowy interest in what Eisenhower famously called the military-industrial complex to put a spin on this subject that's negative and frightening because eventually they know that more and more people, it's already over half the population, believe that UFOs are real and that some aspect of the government's hiding something from us. But what they want people to do is, is attach fear to that knowledge so that they can then make more hay out of that. So that instead of just fighting different countries, we can say, hey, it's like the movie Independence Day when, when I think it was Will Smith said, let's kick alien butt, you know, and they're all, you know, uniting the whole world to go into space to have interplanetary war. And it sounds like a caricature, except remember that Douglas MacArthur, General Douglas MacArthur, the very famous general, in his last address to Congress when he was leaving his position, said – World War III will be interplanetary. So this has been baked into the cake for 50 years. And so what we need to do is bring out the real truth and not the truth that serves the beast of the military-industrial complex and the big aerospace contractors and the trillion-dollar military-industrial complex that, that just is always in search of another villain. Uh, we need to do this in a way where we say, okay, this is 2012, and whatever you may or may not believe about the Mayan calendar being about this year, it's really about the closure of one yuga, of one era, one big cycle that's cosmic, but the opening of a new. And Colin Anders and I talked about this, I think, last time, where we really want to focus on not so much the corruption of what is collapsing but the kind of world that we can manifest from our vision and from our efforts together and our work together in making contact, disclosing the truth, bringing out these sciences and technologies to be used peacefully to benefit all of humanity, this is our purpose. I and mean, this is why Dr. Bravo and I left medicine to dedicate our lives to doing this. Yeah, we the people do have power if we choose to use it. Everyone can do something good, small or large, and especially if we band together, it can be wonderful. Um, we have so many things going on. I, I, we have wonderful trainings this year. Um, we'll be in Arizona next month. That one is full. You mentioned Marco Island in Florida, where we've been before, and oh, what be happened so there. Oh, it's wonderful there, yeah. We have these amazing, we always have an amazing time in Crestone, Colorado. That is a magical place, as is Mount Shasta. You mentioned that earlier, earlier, and those are places that we continue to return to. Um, and, of course, the Southern California desert later in the year. And we're on private land in these, or at least um, uh, uh, if we're at a, a state park, we have um, a permit where we are the only people allowed to be there at that time. So these are very private. It, the intent of the people that are there is good, and we usually have amazing contact, and I really can't wait to get to some of these trainings this year. I know. It's very exciting because ultimately what happens when you have, you know, a couple of dozen people in this deep samadhi state and in meditation mm -hmm. and making contact for universal peace, it creates that uh, dynamic in the morphogenic field that Rupert Sheldrake talks about. It pulls together um, the energies of the people of goodwill around the world. And now we have a member of our team, Costa, who's been on this show, who's coordinating this um, outreach program where we have contact teams 
all over the world, literally on every continent, that are going out in coordinated time. So people who want to get involved with that can do so too. And by the way, all the contact protocols are now on an iPhone app. So, you know, you can download the meditations, the remote viewing protocols, the techniques we use, the tones that were recorded by our team through contact that are uh, that you that we then send out over uh, radio waves, but also just into the air, so the ETs know our exact location. All the contact protocols that we have are on this um, iPhone app, and then there's an entire training uh, program that you can get at DisclosureProject.org at the um, at the store there. And uh, if you can't come to one of these week expeditions, but I I think most people will tell you the the, the most ex- amazing thing is to come. You know, with a, a, a twenty or so people out in, into the wilderness at night and be out under the stars um, until the wee hours, uh, doing this meditation and making contact, and the things that we experience and see are really life-altering and 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 for some people mind-blowing. But it's it's very exciting. But then when those people go back to Malaysia or South Africa or Australia or wherever. Uh, and they have their own little teams of people with three or four or eight people. We're f- hearing from people all over the world who are having these amazing sightings and contact experiences. Um, uh, and so, you know, the, the joy for me is to share this knowledge. People learn it, they, and it's actually very simple because if the intent is pure and the heart is pure and there's some techniques in, in meditation that we teach to go into this silent unbounded state of mind and then to learn to remote view uh, remote places and to see the ET spacecraft or civilizations and make contact and then show them where our location is and we have lasers and tones that we send up from that site it it actually begins once you practice it a little bit it flows and it's never disappointing because uh, people someone asked me once how many times have you actually seen contact happen from this I said well several thousand times and it's not an exaggeration. Um, and it happens in every spectrum of reality, from consciousness and thought to tones that emerge out of the space around us that are something like a celestial song to uh, objects that fully materialize in the field or overhead to beings that appear in the field to contact that begins to happen trans-dimensionally through our electronics. We'll be out in you know uh, millions of acres of wilderness and suddenly will have an electronic device uh, begin to talk as we have contact coming through that device, like a, a magnetometer or uh, a, a radar detector. And there's nothing that would set these things off. We check every time. And so it happens at every level of, of, of reality. Uh, and it, it's one of these experiences that uh, you never know quite how they're going to choose to make contact because they don't always have to, you know, appear like a, something out of a Steven Spielberg movie or Close Encounters of the Third Kind. It's not always safe for them to do so, given the fact that there are military uh, systems that track them and, and target them. But it, the, the reality is that they're going to find a way to make contact if your intent is pure, and that's why th- I know that 2012 is the year for a quantum leap in contact, disclosure, and people understanding that far from the hopelessness most people see, that we actually have the the technologies and the knowledge and the wisdom collectively to create a new civilization that takes us off this, this sort of path of silliness and destruction that we've been on, which, mind you, does it's not the 1% who benefit, it's the point oh 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 one percent who benefit from the current paradigm the most. But the reality is that that isn't going to change so long as we just kind of stay, uh, you know, sheeple, uh, sheep-like people being led around. We're going to have to have a peaceful, transformative revolution. Um, and that that is going to happen through knowledge and education and sharing this 
perspective, heart to heart, person to person. What's wonderful now, the, the things that exist today, or even three or four years ago, did not exist as well. I mean, things like uh, social media, Facebook, YouTube, all of these things that have really taken off. So, what we want to do this year is to bring out more of that gather these people and I think we're going to find that we're going to have an increasing level of contact this year that's going to be amazing and I hope some of you at the World Puja Network, those of you who listen, can join us at these expeditions because I think they're going to be um, increasingly profound and uh, I think we're going to plan a few other special events that aren't yet uh, on the calendar but the calendar as we have it is, is at the cseti.org, c-s-e-t-i.org for those of you who want to look um, but it's something everyone can do. I mean, people can get together with their partner and a couple friends and learn these protocols and go to their backyard or out in the country somewhere, and it's amazing the things you can do. Uh, we had one team up in New York. Uh, you may have remember Marilyn, who's on our team, who's a PhD a psychologist, was uh, in that snowstorm in October. And so they had to sit in their house, and they had, you know, maybe about eight people, I believe, and suddenly they had this craft come out in the snow and there were all these lights and then these orbs and lights and beams came into the house and there was amazing contact that happened and i was you know hundreds of miles away i wasn't even there but the it, it's understanding the knowledge i don't need to be there i mean my my greatest joy is when i hear people doing this without me because my whole goal has been able to is to to share this information and knowledge so that frankly i'm irrelevant and um and and people can do this on their quite on their own and what's really beautiful is that there are now hundreds of people doing this on their own all over the world and uh, in fact thousands and uh, i think that uh, this is what's really exciting is that the more people do that the more it creates the good future the good future manifests through us through our thoughts our words our actions collectively. We can't just sit by ourselves and do it. We need to come together as a people. And uh, that is what really potentiates this morphogenic field shift, this transformation, which I think is what 2012 is really all about. Yes, it's nice to hear something hopeful and to empower people to make that change. I agree. But we have so much that... As, as Steve said, that we want to bring out this year, and, and we are fortunate that we have a way to do it now. And, and whereas in the past, someone, all the, the, the books are wonderful, and I encourage you, um, if you're interested, to take the time to read them. But today, things seem to move so fast that most people um, are glued to their computers. Well, we'll have information there, and, and I'm glad that we're going to be able to get these videos out. Because they're going to be, they have some fascinating information. Oh yeah, it's 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 it's, it's really amazing because, you know, what we have now is um, only about uh, less than four wow. percent of what we have in the archive, and so, um, you know, th- this is a big undertaking, and um, those of you who you know want to contribute to this effort, whether it's financially or with talent, uh, let us know. And uh, we are going to uh, be having more discussions in the next month or so with uh, uh, these really brilliant and, and wonderful pure-hearted filmmakers yeah. that we've met who, who um, can – but, we'll, you know, other people can join and help with this effort. This is a, a communal effort from people. Uh, we'll need research help. Um, there's a lot of things that we're going to uh, need help with. And, in fact, um, there will be new people coming forward who are – uh, holders of this knowledge who have been in the military or government who want to come forward. Um, you know, I'm always struck everywhere I go. If I give a talk, there's usually a couple people hanging back, and they'll say, well, you know, I don't want anyone to really and, – and they'll share this amazing account where, you know, they were working at a secret base or they were uh, working for an aerospace company or for an intelligence directorate or military – and where they handled this information or saw. And it's, it's by p- allowing people to come forward and tell that story, um, which, which is very, very powerful, and particularly if they can also bring corroborating evidence. And so that's something we're going to r- put out a new call for more of that. Uh, and ultimately, 
uh, now it, it, there's there's a great forum that's uh, or fora. There are several fora that have been set up where this can be done. And um, uh, I'm also looking at starting a blog this year where you know we, I can do a commentary as we release more and more of these images and more and more of these videos uh, in advance of this large release. We hope later this year. Uh, or certainly within the next year of, of a definitive world documentary. And uh, I'm hoping when we do that, we'll have a number of premieres around the world where we'll gather uh, and, and show it and have discussions and have people come forward who uh, can confirm much of this information because it, it, it's something that so many people uh, know is true, but it's a subject that uh, has to be uh, reframed so that people feel comfortable acknowledging what they know is true. And that's one of the things that Disclosure Project has done uh, all around the world, even in various governments that have come forward and said, oh, my gosh, you know, we really do need to release this, and, and, and they're doing it. The hard nut to crack, obviously, is the United States, and it's because the United States uh, uh, the defense industry uh, is ten times that of any other one in the world, and um, also, the center of uh, power financially is in the United States. I mean, everyone talks about China, but you know we still have a gross domestic product of three or four times that of China, which has uh, four times as many people. So it's an order of magnitude per capita more. And the problem with that is that the macroeconomic issues that, that revolve around the technologies behind UFOs and extraterrestrial spacecraft is such that bringing that out is really going to transform things. And it, it will have to totally remake our economy, frankly, um, away from a consciousness of scarcity to that of abundance, of uh, a system of, of brutal haves and have-nots to abundance for everybody on the planet, uh, from a system of uh, artificial scarcity to uh, plenty, because there is plenty. Uh, but we, it's plenty because we're not going to have to be burning things to get energy or to grow things. Uh, so when you look at this, it's, every aspect of our civilization uh, will be transformed. It's something that should have happened several decades ago, but I wasn't alive then, so it's not I can't do it when I wasn't here. So here we are. It's 2012, and so now's the time to do it because we, we can and we must. Gaia herself, I know that the Earth, is a conscious living being, and, and the Earth is female. And she is really quite fed up with the damage and destruction we're doing to the Earth, but she's also very loving. And, and the Earth herself has been, in ways that we don't have time to go into, been amazingly supportive and protective of what we're trying to do, as have the ETs. And, and I think it's because they know we're doing this for... Uh, the right reasons and without fear and we have to just you know speak the truth and know it and speak it and uh, manifest this and and uh, it's not that it's easy if it were easy it would have been done 50 60 70 years ago but it, it's essential and I think that the forces will be there to help us uh, that are both seen and unseen forces because it's urgent that it happen and we need all of your help to join us in this effort, so I hope you will do so. Yeah, yeah, um, I can only echo that. And just um, if if you have a story to tell us, be in touch. If if you have a wonderful story to tell us, um, and if you can come join us, we'd love to have you. Indeed. Well, I think our time is up. But Jan, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. And thanks to the World Puja Network folks who have been so kind to, to give us the, the, the time and uh, the, the venue to discuss these matters with you and to share with you what we're doing this year. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Until then, keep looking up, and God bless all of you.